Welcome to episode 99. I have a special treat for you. Today, I have a seasoned Windows veteran named Alex, who is the author of the Book Bull Antivirus Test and Review Show. You can see I have his screen up right here. And we've got a really good discussion for you today on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Alright, welcome to Spatry's Cup of Linux. I have a nice treat for you guys. I have a seasoned Windows veteran, uh, Alex, the author of the Buck Bull Antivirus Show here on YouTube. Let me uh, go ahead and pull up his channel for you. Uh, welcome, Alex. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. How are you, Spectre? Uh, I'm hanging in there like a loose tooth, as I always say. Now, uh, one thing I wanted to point out is you have a magnificent show where you spend hours on end actually testing antivirus systems for Windows users and giving an unbiased view of how these work. And I feel this is a benefit because we have a number of Linux users who are dual booting their systems and they need a good protection to keep their Windows side fully functional. Uh, please tell me a little bit about your show. Well, um, I try to give a, an unbiased uh, review of uh, each antivirus software. Mm -hmm. And uh, people, you know, people bank online and uh, they need to be safe, you know, and uh, try to give them views on uh, antivirus software. And especially if they're free, then that's definitely a benefit. If, uh, they don't have money to spend on uh, expensive uh, antivirus software. So I just do multiple tests and uh, let them see for themselves the results. Yes, and I, ha I have really found some of your reviews to be quite informative and inspiring, you know, and the, you. The, yeah. the nice thing is, though, that there is a lot of great software out there that you can try out that you do not have to pay for, and uh, yeah. I know I have done my fair share of that, especially when you think of how expensive software is nowadays, you know. And uh, speaking of expensive software, you know, that's one of the reasons why I decided to switch to Linux. And uh, now you've recently switched to Linux. Is my understanding you've tried Pinguy OS. Have you tried any other distributions? I have. I've tried uh, Ubuntu. I've tried um, Linux Mint. And, um, yeah, that's about it so far. But uh, Okay, and I'm, all three... I'm liking, uh, I'm sorry, what? And all three of those are excellent distributions for beginners, too. Yes, yes, they are. Okay. Now, uh, now, being a Windows Power user yourself, you probably encountered the same bumps in the road that I have, you know, because you're so used to doing things one certain way in Windows, and then when you jump into Linux, you're thinking that you can make all these changes the same way, and that's not so, uh, is it? And, you had a little no, bit of a yeah. you had a little bit I of mean, a learning curve to hit. Uh, explain some of the bumps in the road that you had to hit. Uh, well, two major ones that uh, come to mind are I had a lot of network problems, mm -hmm. and um, I have a Zoom um, MP3 player, which uh, as people might know is a Microsoft only product, and uh, that gave me a lot of a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. Now I remember we had a discussion on this in private chat on. Uh, YouTube where you were asking for suggestions on how to get that running and I had suggested that you try a uh, virtual machine running uh, running a Windows operating system. Which operating system did you choose and uh, how well is that working out for you now? Uh, which Linux distribution did I choose? No, which uh, Windows operating system did you use in a virtual uh, machine? Um, I'm using Windows Vista because I have a CD for it and uh, just keeping it legit. Okay, I don't excellent. Need any illegal keys. Yeah, and uh, you know that's something you mentioned you wanted to bring up about how people are, you know, downloading pirated software uh, right, right. on torrents and that sort of thing, and these key gens and key makers and that sort of thing, and and uh, and uh, the dangers of using them. Yeah, I mean, people think they're getting something good, 
and they execute it and uh, you know they get a blue screen computer just restarts and they're thinking you know what the hell is going on and then they get infected and you know it's just a whole chaotic mess that in Linux you won't have to deal with because exe files are not going to be able to affect Linux uh, and, and that is the truth you know now uh, when you're using wine for instance though that will allow you to execute uh, those uh, files and even if they are infected with a virus they will sit there and not really do anything because you know uh, of the fact that you know anytime you need elevated privileges in Linux you know it requires a password and right, these, right. and these programs just don't know how to access that system within Linux yeah now uh, which Linux distribution are you running right now and is are you dual booting or using it uh, using it uh, indigenously actually uh, I'm using right now Zubuntu as my primary system and um, I'm using the gnome 3 shell but uh, I'm, I'm actually still waiting for a Linux mid 12 to come out in pin guy OS 11.10 I'm going to so actually I'm definitely going to try those out too. I'm actually going to be reviewing both of those once they are ready and they both look like competent operating systems. I can't wait to get my hands dirty with them and uh, I'm also exploring the option of doing a full how-to series on those as well for the benefit of the viewers. So definitely yeah. Uh, that sounds that sounds really good. Now, uh, you indicated earlier uh, we had a chat before the show that you kind of had mixed feelings uh, uh, whether you like, you know, Windows or uh, Linux better, what is your impressions on that? Well, I mean, Windows 7 is an excellent operating system, don't get me wrong, but... I would uh, have to agree. I like Linux, you know, it's just uh, open source software, everything's free, you know, it just works. And Windows, you know, it's good, but, you know, if you, if you want to get a good software, you know, chances are it costs money, and, you know, you either have to find an illegal crack or you have to buy it and you know I just don't have the patience for that so Linux so far I found every alternative software that I use in Windows and it's working out great for me. Give me some examples of the alternatives that you found. If you um, don't well for burning DVDs for example I was using VSO convert X to DVD4 uh -huh. but uh, in uh, Linux I'm using a program called DVD and uh, a burner called K3B and uh, they're working great. Both excellent programs you know, and you know some of the alternatives for me. Uh, I use Sony Vegas in Windows right. for all my video There's editing. There's a program called Caden Live, right? Yeah, I've used Caden Live, but you know what? I found OpenShot to be a lot better, and so I've actually uh, I've actually migrated to uh, OpenShot. I really love that editor. It's very simple, intuitive, and easy to use. And then, of course, since I have all of my Windows applications running natively under Wine and Vineyard, I'm able to still do all my special effects and titles and that sort of thing using my Windows soft software natively in Linux and then just pull them into OpenShot. So right. I've always, yeah. I found that to be a wonderful advantage. Now uh, finally, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, would, you or would you recommend Linux to novices or beginners? And uh, if you have any specific distribution that you feel would be beneficial to them, um, yeah, I absolutely, we recommend Linux to a novice user. Um, something I would recommend would probably be Ubuntu or Linux Mint. Uh, Ubuntu just uses the Unity interface, and you know it's just easy for people. They see big icons, you know, and you know it's an easy operating system. If they want more of like a traditional desktop environment, then Linux Mint would be a good choice. And uh, if maybe somebody wants to have a Windows style. Uh, user interface and Zorin OS is a fantastic choice for uh, for Windows loaders. Wonderful, you know, and those are terrific suggestions. Now, uh, my next episode will be my 100th episode, and I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag just yet, but mm, okay. something related to this discussion we're having right now will be coming up. So be sure to keep your eyes out for that. Well, once again, uh, once again, Alex, I really appreciate you taking the time to appear on my show. You have a magnificent channel yourself. If you're still using Windows and dual booting, please check out the Buck Bull on YouTube, and he will give you he will give you some really good opinions on antivirus systems to keep your uh, computers protected. 
And uh, I really thank you for your contribution today. Uh, I found your views to be quite invaluable, and I'm sure that my guests will as well. And I'd like to thank all of my uh, viewers and subscribers for watching Spatry's Cup of Linux. We have a lot more good stuff heading your way. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe. Catch me on Facebook and Twitter. And you can even catch uh, Buckbull. Are you on Facebook and Twitter as well? No, no, not really. I'm not really into that. Okay, but you can still you can still catch uh, the Buckbull. I will have a link to his channel on my show notes. So all you have to do is just click the link in there, and you'll be able to easily find his channel. Once again, thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.